All right, we're doing the one and done uh, metagame challenges. Obviously, can't keep that hand. Can't particularly keep this hand, can we? Three. Yeah, I guess we keep this one. So the reason we're keeping this one is we can get a herd migration, get our third land, beanstalk giant, get our fourth land. Um, against mono red, yep. Obviously, a bit of a problem. We have red, red. Let's get the swamp for taking a hit for five. If we top deck Quint here, we might have a chance. But I think as things stand, we're a little too slow. Basically, if the opponent has anything, we're dead here, but... Persistence in could conceivably bring in farewell, but I think farewell is a little too slow for this style of matchup. Um, I think we just shave on cards. <clears throat> First, sand that literally does nothing. Sand also does nothing because of the mana standpoint. but it is what it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Should have had Bedeck Bedazzle on our hand, which would at least allow us to interact with one creature. Mm-hmm. 
Sickle and Dotha try to find Quint here. Um, the live running is kind of annoying. about the worst case scenario. Again, just enough life to uh 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 staying alive, staying alive. No matter how you block here, you're just dead. Maximize interaction on the draw, especially. Hmm. Quite the hand of magic curves there.
Little swizzle spear. Four. So what's more likely to happen here? Um, if I go to eight, any burn spell finishes us off, right? Um, alternatively, gaining three doesn't really do us a whole lot here. I think we have to take the gamble and tr try. <laughs> All right, yeah, that is perfectly reasonable, I think. Go to one. Does prevent the life gain, but does at least um, allow us to burn the opponent out. Last copy. Nice. Able to beat Mono Red. Which is not the easiest deck to start out with. Back one play for match number two. Sand literally does nothing. This hand is a good bit more debatable about keeping, but I still think we can do better on five. Um, sand isn't great, but I do think we keep up the top deck here. Mono black. What the heck does that do? More creatures control dies, you can and gain life so many turns once each turn. Let's go ahead and kill this. I don't know what's going on over there. I don't really want to know what's going on over there. Oh, okay, we're just. It's a vampire. I see. What do they have? Priest of the Schism. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
Hmm. Ah! Whoops. That was not what I meant to do. One more to hit. Mono black vampires ish.
So one of the downsides of Quintorius combo against a deck like any variant of vampires, Rakdos of range, etc., is the inability to board something like Leyline of Sanctity. Um, which Leyline of Sanctity would tremendously help in the matchup if you could, you know, get away with it and still execute your part of the discovery combo. So I mean we gotta keep this hand. It's resistant to one thought seize dress effect. Um Heck. Mm -hmm. Equip the crown, sure. Not exactly what we were looking for here. Um, Technically missing at the moment is blue. Nothing I can think of other than March, maybe, that would get us here. But I suspect their deck's not playing that, so I don't know we're going to play around it. If they had two mana up, we would have a decision to make about whether to go for Farewell or Quintorius here. Always make sure your clever impersonator copies a spark double if possible. Um, a lot of the versions have been going towards release the wind, and I don't mind release the wind in the Gearhawk version because it gives you another thing to flash back. But I find clever impersonator, while it is more difficult, much more difficult to cast if you top deck it. Um, you know, can copy your ley line bindings, can copy your um, you know, virtue of persistence is um, it can copy you know your opponent's most powerful permanent. So it's not a small deck building requirement, but still, I think impersonator is just a little bit better. All right, match three. Yeah, we'll keep this one, especially on the play. Okay, that's our only blue source. Karuga usually only represents two decks, and that being um, Quintorius Combo and Karuga Fires, so it is a bit of a uh, giveaway to show this, but... Could be up against the mirror as aggressively as our opponent mulliganed. They're indicating blue-white by the basis of their colors, and it does look like they're in fact blue-white control. So, go. Sure.
The deck Bedazzle isn't great, but at least it gives us a... So we know our opponent has either Memory Deluge or... Um, are they really going to tap out for something here during their turn? Be interesting to do. Okay, sure. I never understand blue white control players. Like, I literally never understand the stupid things they do in this matchup sometimes. I've had, when I was playing the Gearhawk version, I've had them like basically tap low for a uh, um, the three mana sweeper, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my hand, just to exile my treasure tokens and then I untap and kill them. It's like, okay, sure. In post board, we get to bring in the four thought distortions and two copies of Thrun, and then go down for Bedeck Bedazzle, and then Clone effects. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure why they tapped out during their own end step to uh, make a shark. Maybe they thought it was my end step. I don't know. It's the only thing I can think of that makes like semi logical sense. I don't think this matchup is great by any means, but it's not as bad as I once thought it was. Mostly because blue white mages sometimes make some boneheaded mistakes, and you're just like, okay, oops, I win. It's one of the nice things about the Gearhulk version of the deck. Um, people ask why I like that one so much. Usually, specifically, the blue-white control matchup, the Torrential Gearhulks um, force them to tap mana, um, either from Gearhulk flashing back a uh, like a um oh what's his name that card Magnum Opus. Um, forcing them to tap mana to deal with the Gear Hulk, to either counter the Gear Hulk or to deal with the Magnum Opus itself because um, they just kind of get destroyed by uh, their lands being tapped down, then you untap and then, like, you know, play the combo and kill them, or, you know, you just, like, make nine power, deal them five damage then, you know, even if they answer all that, then, um, this hand is a mulligan, this hand is a quasi-keep, bring back basic mountain,
I think I'm actually supposed to shave one of the ley line bindings over one of the copies of Tanuki because you really want to maximize your ramp. And I think we're just going to win this game from our opponent just deciding that they're not playing magic. So. Not the most awesome of runs, but um, 3 0 is 3 0. So, kaboom. Matchup number four. Yeah, kind of hard to argue with a turn four win with a little bit of interaction if we have to be up against a creature deck. <clears throat> Goblin sleeves, interesting. Okay, it looks like we're up against. Quintorius combo. Go ahead and play that out. We might be up against Angels too. There aren't too many decks that lead on like Razor Verge, Thicket, Go. Oh, sure. Get a red source here. So Angels is a weird matchup. Um... In that, yes, my opponent goes to 25 here. Um, the problem with the deck is because angels can gain so much bloody life, um, it is possible for them to out damage the combo, especially if you draw some of your clone effects. Um, here we got a little bit lucky that we haven't drawn any of our clone effects. Um, and I think we'll have a little bit more than enough to cross the finish line, um, especially since we didn't hit Clever Impersonator, Clever Impersonator right out the bat. Um, we, instead we hit one of our Spark Doubles. I mean, the, the downside of the Quintorius combo is there is a finite amount of damage the combo itself can do, but a lot of people are like, well, Okay, your combo can't kill me if I get to X amount of life, for instance, against Malia or Angels. Um, but what it can do sometimes is it can just outright, um, like, leave this insane board position where the opponent has no uh, hope of winning the game. Like, if we would have been on the draw there, our opponent could have been easily at 20 or 30-some life. Uh, or 30-some life and, you know, really cause problems. Probably want the farewells and maybe the virtues. The question is, over what? Can't really afford to go down any of the... Uh... Maybe it's just... down over like a couple of herd migrations. You don't want to give up any of your ramp. And the problem on the draw is your opponent might have things like Invasion of Goblet Con, um, Elite Spellbinder, you know, just random nonsense like that. Um, so I think we try it, although the, the lack of lands may get us here. Okay, it is an ETB effect. Good to know. <laughs> Been a minute since I've played Angels, so I wanted to make sure it wasn't an on cast thing that would punish us for doing things. Yep, yep, just. Mm. 
Obviously, we need to draw one more mana source. Sure. Don't really care about this hit for two, but I am going to go ahead and deal with this. Resplendent Angel. I can probably want here. Sure. Come on, deck. Give me a land. That could be problematic, but we'll see. Have to go for the combo. Spark double first, please. Nope. All right, opponent scoops. Um, I don't know that we definitively had the kill there, but um, it's one of the things about this deck is once you get above twenty some life, uh, drawing your clone effects is problematic. Match another on the play. Yeah, I'll try it. This matchup could be problematic. Drowning clone effects certainly does not help. Especially if they're just going to follow you here. So the reason I'm conceding without showing anything further to my opponent um, is just we are, in fact, 100% dead. So, um, nope, no, Gargadon really helps the matchup all that much. This is one of the matchups that just is Hmm. 
is less than ideal, but Nuki kind of helps, but we are a little on the slow side here, and they do have a bunch of cards that can kind of punish us, so... Thing. Interesting. Feel like they're holding up Get Lost. It's got to be the only card that makes sense here. Like, we really don't have a choice. We have to go for it here, but if they have get lost here, we're just dead, so. Literally nothing we can do. I mean, I could make a dude. I hope that's good enough. Looks like they just have nothing. Like on the draw, farewell is just going to be too slow. So we'll try Garger off, but I don't really think it's much of an improvement. I mean, this has, <laughs> this hand literally has everything we want except one untapped land. Like, if we could go guarantee go, like, Kentura Triome into, say, Swamp, um, Virtue of Persistence something, or Herd Migration, you know, that's the, that's the thing with this hand is it's, like, basically everything we want, so I have to gamble with it, but the, the double tap land might just get us, especially on an opponent that kept seven. I 
Yep. And you just tied the nuts. Catch a try on there. The gleeful demolition. Yep. White source. All right, come on, spark double. There we go. We're admittedly getting very lucky so far in this run. Alright. On the play. I'll try it. Womp, womp, womp. Okay, on the veil, uptick. And uh, 
So this is one of those matchups where having access to something like uh, Garuda as opposed to more of the removal spells might be better. Um, you know, whether it be you know, just having a higher density of threats against the discard spell deck. So we're up against mono black mid, mid range or control. Which means this game we're going to get the ever-living crap thought seized out of our hands. So. Yeah, can't keep the one lander. Try this one. Um... Definitely want to keep all the lands. Guess we put back Virtue of Persistence here. Hmm. So, currently missing Island Forest. I'm getting a bunch of value off of Waste Knot, so. care about the beat down plan too much. It's just their constant yeah, obliterator is a little scary, but <sighs> Nick this. Good game, well played. This is always the order you want to hit your clever impersonator in. Again, kind of hard to pass up the uh, all the combo. All right. Well, it's like we're up against sacrifice, which ironically is a more difficult matchup. Oh, 
because if they play freaking um, Mayhem Devil at any point, we're just like, can't win ever. Currently missing swamp. Jam, if they have it, they have it. Better triumph or uh which I'm gonna call it would be the card we're looking for here. Or we're trying to dodge. This is like the absolute worst order of things. We got lucky our opponent scoop there. <clears throat> there. We got lucky. That's why I said never scoop to this combo until you see the final thing go on the stack. <laughs> um Farewells, bring in the virtue. Well, actually, virtue isn't that particularly good. Garner off's not great against their stealing effects if they even bring them in. Um, we'll go with that. All right, so one, two, three. We'll keep it just because of the interaction. source pretty badly, but we already knew that when we kept the hands, so... Mm -hmm. I think they have to take either Binding or Farewell here, depending on how long of a game they're trying to play. Yeah, I wouldn't take Bedeck Dazzle. I think that's like the last one you want to take here. But. Opponent's leaning towards it, which is interesting.
gonna go ahead and deny them. Any type of mana fixing or card draw. Not mana fixing, um. Not a huge fan of that card, but it is what it is. Guess we grab the blue mana, but we're playing this out because there's a good chance they're chilling on a. Uh, Bitter Triumph here. It's a Kenzin, sure. Mm-hmm. Comes out and dies. Two, three, four. So you have four, seven. crypt in our hand. Yep, people, cool. sure. clearly has something in their hand that they're trying to hold on to.
Should have known from the uh, Murex that they were not actually sacrifice. Of course I had fun. Alright, so I'm still not 100% sure, ironically, how I feel about this list. Now, obviously, there are yeah, three or four different versions of Gwentorius running around right now. You've got the Garuda, no Garuda, the Torrential Gear Hulk, no Torrential Gear Hulk. Um, even within the Torrential Gear Hulk the builds, you have the um, Dispersion, or the split card that's basically Bad Ponder with Diffusion Dispersal, or whatever. Um... But most versions have kind of settled on moving away from Torrential Gear Hulk. Uh, the one thing I was kind of worried about with this version is only having you know eight true uh, game-winning payoffs. But you do play a reasonable enough fair game. Um, I think all the additional removal spells certainly help against you know aggressive decks. I'm not gonna lie, we got extremely lucky on a couple of things number one we didn't stare down rakdos vampires which yes we played i think against three thought seized duress decks and did beat all three of them but i do think vampires is just the best version of those decks um and we were lucky to not stare down that 
Um, we got very lucky against both Mono Red and uh, Boros Convoke to come away with wins there. Um, both those decks have very difficult to beat draws, and I think Game 3, if ironically, at match number 1 against Mono Red, um, you know, we ended up at one life when we comboed off. Um, so, I mean, to say that we had a very good run, if you also include all the amount of times that we, you know, were on the play, um, you know, it's really kind of hard to, uh, chalk this up to, I mean, we definitely played well. We definitely played to our outs. We mulliganed, I think, fairly well. Um, but, you know, Magic is still a game of honestly getting a little bit lucky, and I felt we got a lot lucky this, you know, and against Blue White, which is another tricky matchup, our opponent made a boneheaded play, and then, um, you know, just kind of scooped game two, so, you know, it's a 7-0, but you know, like any really good run, it does come with a good bit of good fortune, um, so, anyways. That'll be all for today. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you like Pioneer content, and hope to see you for the next video.